Uh, Heather Montgomery, the 6th of the 8th, 2022, Fermanagh House. Introducing... Mark Byers. David Bailey, District Master of Derry Gunley Orange Hall. And we're here to discuss about the building and going forward history of Derry Gunley Orange Hall. Yeah, I'll just start. We're starting to gather up information regarding to the history of the hall that was built in, started in 1888 and the building was opened, completed in 1889. The land was gifted by the Archdale family, Captain Mervyn E. Archdale, one of the la local landlords, along with a donation of £100 to start off the building fund. The architect was Thomas E. Elliot, who designed the Methodist Church in Enniskillen and the Methodist Church in Bundoran around the same time. The foundation stone was laid by the trial, which we have in front of us, in the 13th of August, 1888. And the hall was officially opened one year later, on the 1st of July, 1889. The builders were D. Mackey of Enniskillen, and the total cost of the build was £600. I suppose there's various organisations using the hall over the years, primarily built as an orange hall. There were six orange lodges when the hall was built in 1889. Uh, two of those are no longer in existence. We have still four of those original lodges using the building. We've also got a Royal Black Preceptory in the hall and a Ladies Orange Lodge. Um, Various bands again have used the hall over the years. Uh, there was Derry Gunley Flute, several different variations. There was one which took part in the opening of the hall. There was another one in the 1950s and one in the 80s. There was a pipe band belonging to Tabot Lodge and there's Churchill Silver Band which is still in existence to this day. Inish McSane Parish Church would also have used the, the hall for various functions over the years, including church services, Sunday school, concerts, and again are still using the hall to this day. I had an interview with um, the chap from Inish McSaint. We did him. Eddie Rogers. Yeah, Eddie. Eddie. He came out yeah. and did his interview with us. Very Fascinating. Good. Yeah. Edward probably showed you that. He did, Sovereign, and, Well, one half of it yep. is the Orange Hall, the other yep. half of it is in the same. The church, actually I was listening to a DVD this morning. We have done a, a DVD back a number of years or two ladies has passed on. Uh, so we have their full information on DVD and I was just listening to it this morning. And that lady was Mabel Hazard. Her father and her grandfather, they were the care first caretakers of the Orange Hall. She was born in the Orange Hall. Oh. She was christened in the Orange Hall. Because at that time, I listened this morning, uh, the original building, which is that size, yeah. there at the drawing, the, the main part of the hall was used as a church upstairs. Downstairs was the lodge room, and the flat, as we call it, was the caretaker's building. Upstairs there was a pulpit, a stage, a communion rail and carpet at the front and a lectern for the, the minister at the time to preach off. And he done his Sunday school, she told us, and uh, just in the video, the Sunday school was at four o'clock on a Sunday and five o'clock was the church service. And she said the place was full. Till later years then, when it came that there was a lady come to the area and she brought the Sunday school children out to Nish McSaint. Mm -hmm. But the hall was the main function area. Even the church was in Nish McSaint. The hall was still a very important part of the church organisation for the, the two and different And for the whole buildings. community. Yeah. And there's an organ as well. And uh, as I say, that is the church end, the walk to the hall. And the church is still very much involved the backbone of the hall. Even the hall belongs to the, to the district officers or to the district of Derry Gonley. It used to be known as District 13. They dropped us from 13 and we come back to 12. So we've 
we've changed, we've taken out the unlucky number. The unlucky <laughs> There are four main principal men started at the beginning of the hall. There was, uh, there was John Trotter, uh, Reverend or Robert Armstrong, James Ferguson, J.P. and uh, Reverend Storler. He was the man, he was one of the ministers that was very much involved with the hall. Uh, Trotter, or yes, Trotter would, uh, was lived in one of the townlands. He very was much involved, and so was the man Arson. The Fergusons, in the area we live in, you're either a Ferguson, Ellet, or an Atchison. Not a bit it, or a Byers, no. or uh, Atchison is related to the Byers too. So <laughs> as I say, I'm a blow in. I only came in in the 50s, but uh, as we used to refer to people years ago, there was a lot of people in the area of that time. And there's no point in saying it, it's history, it's there. Derry Gunley was a very, at that time, was a very prominent Protestant town. Mm -hmm. And so was some of the outside areas. The people came off the mountain. As they don't like to hear that phrase. I, I was, I was uh, looked at one day and frowned at when I referred to the uh, people that came off the mountain, <laughs> that came down to live down. In, I live outside, out in Blaney country. And as I say, a lot of them people has moved down, and as I say, the whole names and the ancestors mm -hmm. comes out of that. Ancestors in the area actually goes a lot further back in history. We can go back and trace ourselves right back to Tully Castle. So we're all planters. We're all planters. We came in as planters, and oh, whatever planters. you like to call us from <laughs> there on. But uh, there, was, there was very much, as I'm not here to talk about Tully Castle, but anyway, it's the history of our area. And it had a very, very bad part of history in, in the history of Tully Castle, with a large fire and uh, people murdered and everything else mm -hmm. from the area. But that was the fights and the wars and the battles of them time, you know. But uh, the three people, the Fergusons, the Armstrongs and the Throtters, they are ri all original people from the area. And as I say, this minister worked with them very hard and kept the projects going forward and writ about the hall. He would have been only a rector at the time. But they are still would have wanted to show their presence, wouldn't it? Isn't that correct, Mark? Oh, I, I suppose they were. The, the landlords would have been part of the hierarchy of the lodges at that time. And they were, I suppose, building this big hall showed their, I suppose they uh, were doing something. Their prestige, their, their, their prestige. Yeah, definitely. It, it's a very much a, a dominant building yeah. as you come into the yeah. village. And uh, very much dominant building for the orange throughout. Ulster. Yeah. Because you can go a long, long way. If we can see one as good and big. Yeah, good and big. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of rich people about. Mm -hmm. Must have been at that yeah. time, you know. So it was, but uh, there, there's a reference of many six halls, isn't it? Throughout. But six halls. It's in the, the document we had produced. We started a project with. We, we got a development grant from the Heritage Lottery Fund five, six years ago, and we had started to gather some of this history. We had a. A statement of heritage significance written by one of the, I think it was Jason Donaghy organised a, a historian to research mm -hmm. it. So we have that. I've, I've sent that document to you. So with quite a bit of the back history, right. but there's still a lot of artefacts around the country that we need to start gathering in. I suppose I could also talk about the clubs in the later years of the hall, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. Are you doing like um, an artefactual harvest sort of thing to get stuff that was originated from? The whole itself. That's what we need to get organised. Yeah, and get that's away. really important to do. So it is to bring it either back home or to find out where it is and to get the photographic knowledge of it sorted out as well. Yeah. Well, the lady, the lady actually talked that lived in the hall. Her father was a postman, and he went to the First World War. Mm -hmm. And he then, he was nicknamed the Hoosler. I might as well say it. She cheats. The lady's quite happy to talk about it, so um, it was another man was uh, doing the questions to her, so and she had questions and answers, so she answered it, yes. And uh, we thought it was the who's really got the nickname of that in the war, but he didn't. He actually brought a dog from Derrigonley mm -hmm. out to France, so he did. And uh, they actually enrolled in the Orange Hall for the First World War. Mm -hmm. And we have been told to fought on the stairs to get up the stairs to enrol to get to go out to fight in the football war. 
we have history with what happened and uh, when the anniversary of the song came up we you have um, a religious service that yeah. we run in the hall in 2016 yeah. for the psalm because the psalm notes the men went all out with the psalm. Uh, we realised in the 20, in the early 20s, there was two banners painted, one from Church Hill and one from Tapa, of the scene of the First World War on them. We still have them two banners. Okay. Not all is in good shape, but the, uh, the photographs, I, I don't know if I give. You just got them in some sort of, um, well, hoping to get them sort of conserved or submitted to some sort of, like the Orange Order Museum or something? No, or they will. They're going to stay this with hall, you? This hall, every banner, clear enough from the beginning, is there. Wow. And we have, uh, I'm in the Lodge 559, and Throtter is known as Throtter Memorial Lodge. Yeah. And uh, if you you can see him, he's a... He's a very nice looking character up there in the top left. <laughs> but when you see him in the banner, you're hung in the hall for a long, long time. The banner's actually in loan at the minute till uh, Garden Hall in Logan because it was one of the Scots, the painters from Enniskillen, mm -hmm. actually painted the banner. Uh -huh. So we only so found he's that. So got the provenance of the, the actual creation of yep, it and everything. It's brilliant. So, and as I say, this guy, when you look at him, uh, yeah. when he's in the hall and he's uh, at the back of the hall, no matter where you go in the hall, he's looking at you. Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> they are. <laughs> so we do. Um, I, there was various clubs uh, used the hall over the years. But in the 1950s, I think it was, there was a badminton club. Um, Mabel Hazard, who we talked about when she was growing up in the hall, her and her sister used to practice, play badminton as they lived in the building. And they reached the Ulster final in badminton in Mix uh, doubles, mm -hmm. her Mabel and the sister. The badminton club also then started, or a, a bowling club started in later stage, later years, and around the 1960s, they decided the hall wasn't long enough to play a full um, a full badminton match or to take a full bowling mat, so they built an extension just to accommodate bowls and badminton. Good. That was Hugh Dundas, was a man who lived at a drapery shop in Derry Gonley, and he was the main driving force between on building the extension. In my early days in the hall, there was a wee room. It's now a disabled toilet, but it was a wee changing room at that time. And that was always known as Hugh's room, because Hugh was the man that got the extension built. Have you got... Um, so you have started researching the heritage of this and also hopefully harvesting some of the artifacts that are originating yeah. from the actual hall and stuff. What sort of has, obviously your membership of the Orange Order is part and parcel of that, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. um, but what has peaked and why have you decided to do this and sort of, um, I know you said you've got your, your heritage lottery um, background with it, um, but sort of if, if you use a, 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 her, a family interest in it from before and sort of if you can give me a bit more information on my that. My father, well as I say, we're not, Mark's, yeah. Mark's people go back a lot further. We came in in the 1950s from Florencewood area mm -hmm. and my father got very much involved with it. Actually, I didn't for a number of years because I was a silver band player. I, I did actually join a junior lodge and I went to the junior up into the senior, but I didn't take any ranks or anything. I was just stayed and was a member. But uh, in the later years, recently, myself and Mark, our older generation disappeared. Mm -hmm. And if we don't get up to carry it on, it's not going to be there. And the hall needs a lot of money spent on it. It is a listed B2. Grade B2. Grade mm -hmm. B2 Belton. Uh, as the photograph, uh, we brought uh, the Hurge and Lottery people into the hall, looked at the hall whenever we were looking for the grant application, and we had a lady from the Northern Ireland Environmental Agency, a lady that just lived a mile out the road, which is never in the hall, and uh, talked about the hall and about the Orange Order and the different things that goes on, not, not a lot of things goes on, but different things in the order, and one thing about this hall stands out is arched windows mm -hmm. and an arched stage. 
And if you go into the precepts of the order, the most important thing in the order is your royal arch. So it, that hall was built purposefully, purposely yeah. for what it was. And we, we have to preserve that, and that's what we are trying to do. Our windows, is all windows, wooden windows, this, the old, I forget the name of the glass, but when you look up the village at roofs of houses and chimneys, some of the chimneys, if you look out through one window of the state, you look to the next one, they've gone crooked. So that all has to be preserved and kept. So we're really on a fact-finding mission, search, and we're at the minute, just at this moment in time, we're in the middle of a process of a grant just to replast to the front of the hall. We did re for right. three, years three, years. three years ago. So we're getting on, and we're looking at small grants and different things, and our clubs, Marcus mentioned two of the clubs, well, we have all our lodges meet in the hall, our churches meet in the hall. I know this. Um, our minister now has a concert organised for the hall for uh, November time, so she's looking for the hall to get in and get it all going in it. We have bowls, we have badminton, we have scouts, gay, not... Um, Girls Friendly Society. GFS, Girl Friendly Society, and it's open to everybody. The service I went back to, sorry, I talked about was the banners, yeah. the World War banners. Yeah. So we run the banner in 2000, the service in 2016. So we had a large meeting one night and we discussed about people who was killed in the war because there's no problem. We go down to Inish McSaint, the plaques on the wall, we get all the names. But then when we discovered, we started to look at, hold on, hold on, there's an issue here. Half the people that has to be remembered also that signed up in Derry and in and around mm -hmm. is Roman Catholic. You mm -hmm. have to respect everybody. Mm -hmm. So we then turned the whole thing around and opened up our hall. And there's people was in for that service was never in the hall before the night. And they appreciated what we done and remembered the people that all went out mm -hmm. to France and was killed and brought back and a lot of them never came home. And that is that is noted there very much. So it really has become a focus of the centre. Well, it seems to have always been the centre of the community, but it yep, seems yeah. to have been now in, in more recent times. That's continued, and if not, actually become more so. You know, with the all members of the community being all members, yeah. we have no problem. Uh, That's great. Both sides of the community. Uh, you've got photographs there. You can see what was the one of the whole children one. What was that? What function we had. The Jubilee ones for the Queen and it for was, um, Chris, switch on the Christmas lights. No, the summer one mean the um, it was the the Derek only uh, mean the run the Joe Jingles and the run. Um, oh, it was a uh, fun day. Fun day and Derek only. So the hall, the two halls was open, and one there was as many oh, Protestants from one hall as the other, and I'd say the hall did get good use. In there's Mark will talk about the swarries in a minute. I can talk about the dances. I made the dances very well in the Orange Hall many, many years ago. And as I say, the hall would be packed. Uh, you're talking about central heating. There's no need for central heating them nights because they even had to sit in the windows. The place was packed right round and round. And as I say, there's a dance the way the whole night. Uh, maybe not till the proper opening and closing hours, but we still got through the nights and very enjoyable nights. And as I say, Mark, then will go for about concerts and stuff that was run in the hall and soirees. I can tell you about that there now. I suppose there's various concerts over the years, you know, lodges and bands and everything else would have run concerts for fundraisers. Um, in my early days with the lodges and the hall, there would have been an orange soiree held every, I think it was around October, November time. It was basically a concert, local, all local entertainers would have put on plays and read poetry and one thing and another and there was always a guest speaker of some description brought in to, and then everyone had a cup of tea after it and it was always known as the Orange Swarry. And this was open to anybody that wanted to go to yeah. it, male or female? And, yes. And oh yeah, 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 yes. yeah, yeah. The ladies, were, yeah. ladies would have been always helping out. Yeah. Sorry, we mentioned the lodges there but I'll have to correct. There's a ladies' lodge as well, and we'll be we'll be shot if we don't. Mention yes, that. I think so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, the ladies' lodge was a very prominent lodge in Derry Gunley. Very big numbers, and as I say, there is photographs. I have them here today, but there is photographs of the ladies' lodge mm -hmm. with the men out on parade and everything else, and up-to-date ones as well. A very recognised lodge within the county, so it is. So, 
uh, they help and they help things to go along. There was also an unfolding of banners over the years, different banner, different ba banners, no, different banners uh, was unfolded at the hall for the, all the different lodges. Uh, I mind, as I say, myself, there's a, you've got a photograph of me, I think when I was a little bit smaller and had hair on my head in the junior lodge, that was the junior lodge then. Five five nine. I'm just looking at the photograph here. Very known, well known person. Uh, the Reverend Martin Smith was here. So was Reverend Martin Smith was there uh, unfolding that. All them would have been the bands and there'd been parades and everything else. And as well, uh, there's only a vid video that actually was found a few weeks ago of videos of 12th of July's in Derrigan. <laughs> but anyway, the 12th of July is in Derry and it goes back in history. Okay. It's 1960, 12th of July. We have photographs of long before that as well, yeah. of parades or the 12th in Derry and And the 12th of August also was held in Derry Gonley, but in the last uh -huh. 40 years there's never any, the, cra the town went uh, very, too small yeah. and too hard to handle. That, in the early days, there's a man, uh, Alfie Carson. Still alive, he's 90. What is he? Somewhere in the Somewhere. We have to go and get more information out of him. But he told us one night about um, the lodges used to come to Enniskill, but they never come every year to parade Enniskill. Yeah. They parade the local areas, but they parade it within the district. And there's a field beside my house known as the Orange Holla. He called it the Orange Valley, but I know the neighbour maybe the name changed, mm -hmm. but that's where there was games and stuff played on the 12th of July, the six, five or six local lodges and the ladies' lodges. We all paraded mm -hmm. in Derry Gonley, Mina Lara, all around the whole district, paraded to that field and had their day's entertainment and then went home. That's pretty much, you know, similar to up and round. I live in Cumber, so you would have the same thing that was in Valley Gown this year and you've yep. all the different ones coming through yep. and stuff. Um, so um, you were saying about the dances, just to go back to that again, yes. dance and stuff. Uh, who sort of music-wise and stuff? What, what sort of music would you had on, and what sort of dancing would there have been through the years and In the some of the evenings of that or whatever? I can go back about? to my earliest day, oh, and it would have been. Please uh, do. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be uh, Robert Wilson on an accordion, and a, a man Joe Huey, I think they called him, and he played the drums and stuff. Then they'd have moved on a wee bit further, there'd be more What sort of music would that have been? An accordion. Just, uh, just all type of music. Yep. Every type of yep, folk music. Um, dancing music. Everybody at that time, I'm sorry to say, this one lady probably knows the step of a lot of them dances when Robert would have been an accordion player, so there'd been a lot of Scottish type music. Yeah. And there'd been the, the Siege of Venice mm -hmm. and all them type of I don't, don't ask me, I have two left feet, so I couldn't tell you that. But, this lady still in the area would know them off the heart and could go around the floor. And that is the beauty of the Orange Hall. There was one floor laid in it, which was just a board floor when it was built. But in later years, they built a maple, maple leaf floor. Maple floor, isn't it maple? I would say yeah, it's maple. maple floor, floor, which is cross timbered or state timbered. And even a guy that we had in the hall is a very good dancer from our other side of the community said he never danced on a better floor in his life. Well sprung floor, mm -hmm. and really good for dancing. Pity helped the poor people that lived downstairs. I mean, <laughs> one of the caretaker ladies lived downstairs, who her daughter for years, Mrs. Hanley, and she looked after the hall as well, from the 50s on up. And uh, the noise that used to be, as I said, in the flat, sure. was just bang, bang, bang all the time. Sure, but I'm sure it was moving too. Yeah, eh? I'm sure it was moving too. <laughs> it was. Oh yes, it was. Um, <laughs> I could get shot for saying this one, but not in the later in the later years we had ladies keep fit one night, right? Is that, is that Zumba? Zumba. So uh, there's two two men went in to open up, and, and we were sitting in the lodge room as we call the lodge rooms downstairs, and there's these little uh, little there's there are probably 
a foot wide, foot high beams that run from one side of the hall to the other. And actually started looking and measuring the beam while it was moving, the spring in her. And that was ladies just doing the Zambic wow. heat fit. So the whole thing, the building is well sprung. <laughs> I'm not saying the ladies no. was no foot or anything else, <laughs> not down that road. <laughs> but no, everybody always enjoyed themselves. There's no doubt about it, as I say, dance is everything else. And as I say, I mind, well, I was only a cub. I mean, going to them, and there used to be, for the junior lodges and stuff, there used to be little um, socials and different things used to be run, and football and different things in the hall as well for and us. And dinners? Swary, there was Swary dinners. On, the twi- on my records, from my own lodge, I, when they went to the 12th, they came back home from the 12th, and... Um, had a meal in the hall mm-hmm. and it's written in a book it's written in a book somebody supplied so many ham pounds of ham um, butter tea sugar and then there was a li- another little bracket on down below it's written in the book in black and white i have it there uh, clove cordial and a half a gallon of whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> so they really enjoyed the reading. Yeah. That was it. That was the reading was finished going on. But that is all quite we don't do that anymore. We're not allowed to do that and we don't do it anymore. No. But they enjoyed themselves. When they went out for the day, they went back and as I say, that's where we're trying to get the hall back into shape again. The last number of year, years we have run dinner dances for the hall, mm-hmm. along with auctions at the hall and different things to raise funds. And we can't have it in the hall because the hall needs a refurbishment. So we're gearing down the road and looking mm-hmm. forward to that there. Hope get so your ultimate goal is to have the hall back to hopefully as near to its original state, but to be conserved, preserved, and obviously used. Used. Yeah. Yeah. That's used as the main. Yeah, it seems. To, yeah. To have a big building sitting not used is no good. Yeah. Used. But that's it's admirable and it's yeah. also brilliant to know. So it is. It's really. Yeah. It is, everybody says, nobody denies the fact, it's the most prominent building when you come to Dargon. It's the first building you set your, your eyes goes into, because mm-hmm. it's standing up on its own permit. They're looking at everybody as it comes in, and the rails, there's rails and everything else, and, and it's all heritage and history. Yeah. It, sort yeah. Of mm-hmm. But uh, the one man I didn't think was, um, that done a research for us, for the First World War, was um, from Bo. She, uh, McHugh. McHugh. Frank McHugh. Frank McHugh. His, his wife is the ordinator of the castle over mm-hmm. there. And Frank done our local heritage and he, he went to the churches and the chapel and got all the details and chatted the families and brought everything forward. And, and I said it was great and I have to appreciate him for doing that. Absolutely. Forward, you know. Are you going to be doing some sort of maybe a, a, a pamphlet or a publication that can be, like, I don't know, sold for a fiver or something for collecting? Sometimes we have to get get people to the hall first of all. Yeah. I'm looking at a picture here there now. That picture there was of the unfolding of a a black banner. And the, the main person this and that is uh, Strong. Uh, what's his full name? Norman, Norman Strong. Strong. Mm-hmm. He was the man from Tain and Abbey that was shot. He w- he used to be the head of the, the black. Royal Black Perception. Was that him in the middle there? That's then? him in the middle, yeah. That, so so mm-hmm. it's a very nice photograph to have as well in memory of, of what at the time and what happened to the man, you know. So it's, but no, that is what part of the history. I want to say Mark can talk on now. now. I think I've said enough. <laughs> We've covered most things. Um, I just have a wee note here. The, the hall originally was, the front of the hall was open to the main street in Derry Gonney and they decided to put railings along the front. And again, the Archdale family gave a donation towards these railings. I think paid for them, maybe. And the gates, we got sandblasted a few years ago, and the name came out of the, the paintwork was Keenan and Sons of Dublin. So the gates and railings from the hall were made in Dublin. And that, again, was around the turn of the century. Um, my parents remember in, in the 1960s, 50s and 60s, there was movies in the hall. One of the local ministers used to 
show movies. So it would have been all the local children, teenagers would have went to the movies and all. Because there's never a truer sign of Walsk talk, you know, yeah. and um, for the heritage that actually is absorbed into the building over all these decades, yeah. you know, since yeah. its establishment. Yeah. It's, it's getting stuff for the back. It's getting yeah. harder and harder to find. Yeah. I, say, I know uh, our stick and skis, Mr. Minister, in Innes Fixaint, in the later years when the family was all red with us and we were all that type of age and era. And he was very, very skinny, very fond of taking films. And he is an archive of all this stuff as well. And we have to see if we get some of that mm -hmm. and get them to put forward. Because he was actually very much prominent in the Orange Order as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, most of the ministers got involved mm -hmm. with, it, with, with the hall and kept the hall alive and kept it going with the church, with the community. It wasn't just the Orange no, Order, it was the community not. kept the hall. It wasn't known as the community hall, it was no. always just the Orange Hall. And just one way one, back a number of years ago, uh, when we were dealing with the Harris Notre, we had an event one morning. We brought children into the hall. It was uh, <coughs> local primary schools. Yeah. The schools is involved always in the hall as well. I mean, we meant to say it, but the schools always involved in the hall as well. I actually done Jack and the Beanstalk in the hall many years ago. <laughs> <laughs> but a um, little girl from the local. Uh, Controlled maintained school in Bow, was in the hall and walked in. And the first words she said to the teacher, I think it was referred back to us anyway. This is not an orange hall. It's not orange. It's not orange. <laughs> See the perception was out there. It was uh, the children thought it was orange <laughs> inside, and it wasn't open. But that's the type of thing you think, and then that's why people you have to. Focus a lot further than yourself and get out and spend spend the information about a hall and stuff. And hopefully, uh, as a man said to me the other day, you're to repair in the hall to leave it as an asset for the next generation, and they'll have the same to do. That sounds 